he was a, a nature lover to begin with. And the Audubon Society provided him with many birds to use as his subjects. Most of his prints were birds, but um, lots of people in Muskogee had his prints because, number one, they were wonderful to have on your wall. Number two, they were really affordable. He kept, like I said, he kept the price artificially low. And so he had quite a following of people here in Muskogee. Of course, the people knew him because he was in the florist business. And he would have them down at the flower shop on the wall. And you could go to the flower shop and buy a print, you know, that he had already finished and framed and had up. He always had five or six different ones hanging up on the walls. And so they marketed them through the flower shop. He was in the floral business, so his appreciation with, of beauty was highly defined anyway. And he retired relatively early. I think he was in his 50s when he retired. And um, that's when he began etching in earnest. Why he chose etching over anything else, he was influenced again by European techniques. No two prints are ever alike because it makes a difference how much ink you leave on, how much you take off. Sometimes the shades or tones of the colors would be lighter or deeper. And so each one was always new. He did many black and whites, but color was his strength. And there aren't, there aren't a lot of people doing multi-plate color etching out there. That is not something one hand tints. All of it is oil and all of it's in the plates. And the registration is essential. And each print is a, a separate work of art, actually, when you get down to it. It was so fascinating to watch. And it was fun to watch him as the print went through the press. That was exciting. He was excited to see if the print would be successful. And we could always try again, if not. But you were creating something. And you didn't know where it would go. Would it stay here? Would it go overseas? What state? To whom would it appeal? It was just so much fun. But he was always a delight to work with. He always appreciated what I did. He had a great sense of humor. Um, he saw the bizarre and outrageous in things. He was conservative. He was um, impatient. He was very talented, persistent. Perfectionist. Um. He was charming. He was very gregarious. He loved to be with people, enjoyed having company, enjoyed meals with friends. It seemed so natural to him to have a pencil in his hand and there, whatever he saw, if he saw something he wanted to capture, he could very quickly sketch it. It was natural to him, just his breathing. The thing that is unique about him is that he combined uh, two of the standard printing processes for copper etching. And all of, his, all of his birds and all of his color etchings are done with the combination of processes of aquatint and soft ground. He says, why not make a soft ground plate with the drawing on it, and then run it offset on a clean piece of copper to get the drawing on the copper, put the rosin dust on it, and then where I want it to be one color, I'll leave that to etch, and I'll go over all the rest of the drawing with asphalt paint. And that completely stops that out. You put it in the acid, you clean it off, and now where I want that bird to be red, there's the red aqua tint. And I do that for the red, the green, the brown, the blue, the yellows. And sometimes if the colors are separated, you might have two or three colors on one plate because the leaves are here and the berries are here and you might be able to get away with that. So then you run those plates on the same piece of paper back and forth with the different colors and voila, you've got a, you've got a color etching. So that, and that, that process is one that he cultivated himself. And he was happiest when he was working in his studio, of course, but he also shared his um, etchings or his sketches with his friends. They liked to come over 
and see those. And I remember in the studio, Maury learned to whistle out of the side of his mouth. Most of us pucker. He learned to f like that, and you could hardly tell it. But he always whistled the same tune, whether he was coming up the walk or in the studio, and it was Roses of Picardy. keep printing all day long. His love was etching. He liked everything about it. It was so important for him to be able to print. That was his life. So he good. had uh, cancer, bone cancer, is what finally ended his life. However, he also had a heart condition but it never stopped him from uh, his artwork. He continued right up until maybe three days before he died, printing. I didn't really realize that I was going to learn much more about life than I was about art in the 10 years I was in this room with him, all day, virtually, every day. Um, so if I had to say, what, what's the greatest thing I ever got from him? Yes, the ability to earn a living, that's nice. But the other is, um, you know, lessons in life. I wouldn't have gotten from anyone that hadn't had the life experiences, and he had them. Murray was an institution himself in Muskogee. He was well known by most of the population, most of the citizens, well respected by them, genuinely loved he was a fascinating man. I would not have missed him for the world. 